Alright. My bad. It's all sixes. Ready? Yeah. Um right, let's, let's fucking do it. Alright, my bad. My fault. My fault. Y'all y'all good? We good? We good? Alright. I good. hope so. This is recording. That's recording. Okay, so this is the main camera. Uh whenever y'all whenever <laughs> whenever y'all actually <laughs> speak, that's when she's gonna get you. On, on that camera and then look at the camera while I speak. This is my nah. We well, just that's how I just be like, right. yo. <laughs> 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 and another thing. No man, <laughs> y'all stupid. All right, <laughs> man. <laughs> All right, man. Oh, when you do the solo drums, you look at Y'all stupid. Why is he looking all over the place? Anyway, He's man. To himself. Yeah. Arrow, 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 arrow. What up, man? What's popping? Uh, one mic stand. I'm Jackson, creator and host. I said that shit all out of order. Um, but what's going on? Uh, creator and host of one mic stand. Jackson one six one six. I'm in Philly. I can't even say I'm back in Philly. I'm not on my sofa, but I'm on an a sofa, on a stool. I'm in Philly. I'm in an Airbnb, man. I'm doing the Philly episodes of the One Mic Stand. This is the first episode of the of the the several that that we're gonna do. Um. Oh shit! Shout out to Seeing Juice. What up? What up? What up? What's going on, man? So I gotta um. Y'all know that I'm doing like the the men episodes for men, right? The I'm not talking to women no more. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't yell and I didn't scream and I didn't rant it or whatever. I didn't, I didn't got told that I hate black women. I didn't got told all kinds of shit that I hate my mom and I hate my sister, even though I'm an only child and shit like that. Oh, um, <laughs> not because you know you can't, you can't critique black women without hating black women. So, but on, but on your videos you don't hate. Your so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but nah, man. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to kind of start something. I don't even want to say that it's new, but I want to be a little bit more consistent. Uh, we're really just because, you know, like the, the natural rebuttal, I feel like sometimes when men talk about women, the rebuttal is, you know, why don't you talk to your friends about that? Why don't you talk to your niggas about that? Why don't you hold your, your homies accountable and have those conversations like with your with your friends that are dudes or whatever? So I'm finally like, all right, bet I'm going to sit down with men and I'm going to talk to men about about men shit, about man shit. Um, so this is one of those episodes. Uh, I kind of want to talk about marriage. I want to talk about marriage. I want to talk. I want to talk to men who were married, are married, currently married, thinking about getting married, in a relationship, out of relationship. Just kind of like all of that, all of the dynamics that kind of you know goes into that. Um, so I have two guests on the show right now, man, two of the homies, uh, two of the homies before the Patreon, two of the Patreon supporters, some of the people who be on the Zoom, you know what I'm saying, I actually talk to them and know them outside of the, uh, outside of me just trying to sell nigga shit all the time, um, you know what I mean, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and let y'all introduce y'all selves, man, and then we can get it started, so, we'll start with you. All right, um, Charlie. Speak uh, up, nigga, you know my mics is trash. <laughs> <laughs> but you got like mad money. Yo, I don't have. I don't got nothing. I don't, I'm not taking trips. When I get this, look. When I can <laughs> get to this, when I get this, a thousand subscribers, man. I got production. Y'all. I got videos. y'all. I got y'all. No. Who, who are you, nigga? Um, Charlie uh, from Jersey. Um, I was married once. What's your What's your social school? Just what's your <laughs> social media? Oh, uh, yeah, you follow me on Instagram if you want to do that sort of thing. Look at my model pictures, uh, cause I do that. Um, Boss Carlo B O S five Carlo C A R L O. That's all I got. Okay. okay. And you? Um, I'm Victor Jean Phillip. <laughs> this nigga is fucking. Like this nigga is nah, done. I'm Victor Jean Phillip. Friend of Jack's, we talk often. Um, um, my socials is VJP twenty four underscore. I also got a podcast. I'm sorry, I have to put a plug. Um, nah, by all means. Weirdly enough, it's a podcast with my ex wife, and we talk about my dating life. That tends to be hilarious. Um, decisions we have to make when it comes to raising our daughter. Um, Those are fun. I'm just a chill guy. Gotcha, gotcha. Your intro is way cooler than mine. 
<laughs> Yo, y'all not gonna stupid. say I'm his friend because this, we're not really friends. It's more business. So like, I want to start. I I want to right into the shit, man. All Obviously, right. I'm not married. I'm single. I've been single for some years, um, and you know, a lot of people know why or whatever. Uh, but speaking of speaking of like serious relationships, engagements. Uh, wives, marriages, shit like that. Like, let's just start with like, what was your general opinion on your marriage? My general opinion on my marriage—that's a—that's a huge question. Like, what are we like? Well, okay. So I want what I want to. I I kind of want to know. Like, let me ask it another way. What was your what did you think marriage was going to be like before you got married? And then once you were married, what was marriage actually like? And I know that's still vague, that's still broad, but that's kind of going to, you know, take us into the conversation. What I thought marriage was, I, let me give a context on that as to why I got married. All right. So, I get a look, get a little bit closer onto the on the mic for me. Yeah, I kind of um I grew up in church, right? And um going to church and most of my friends were getting married. Like, I was with 25, she was 22. Most, almost all of my, that was a traditional thing to do. You meet someone, you like her, um, you guys spend a couple years together. The natural transition was to get married. Um, with me, it was no different. Like, you know, it just so happened, like the person I married, I knew since I was like 16 years old. Mm. Like, we've known legit known each other for like 22 years now and you know and that's when you call your that's your best friend now we really close yeah yeah it's it's weird because most people are like yo get it y'all married I get <laughs> it I, I get it <laughs> the thing i don't like is that people are like yo yeah y'all never see y'all getting back together i'm like that's like the homie like you know what i mean like it's it's so crazy because we've Man. gotten so close that we don't even look at each other like that mm. so but um, I guess I'm getting long winded, but the thing is, the way I thought marriage was gonna be, I think it's gonna be blissful. You know, this is my homie. This is the person I like. This is the person she knew me before. Like she knew I couldn't even fake it with people. You know, when you first meet someone and you put on your best face, she knew the bad parts of me because we were mm. friends before that. Right. So we get together and it was fun. Not gonna lie to you, it was it was a blast. It was my homie. Like we used to do pranks all the time. <laughs> I mean, like, we used to do craziness. But the part about marriage, people, I thought it was going to be this blissful, we got together, blah, blah, blah. The part about marriage, people don't tell you, and people want to advertise marriage. Like, as long as you love each other, things are going to work. Marriage is more than love. I'm telling you that right now. It takes more than love to make marriage work. Okay. Like, financially, um, we both got hit. Like, we got married... We got married within a month. I lost my job. Within two months, she lost her job because this is around the recession. Mm -hmm. So, like you know, and the financial pressures of it. You know, you could say all you want. Oh, as long as we love, as long as we love each other, most divorces happen because of finances. You know, um, in my case, I kind of felt like, oh, like. A time we did, we we weren't seeing eye to eyes. It didn't really have to not to, it didn't really have to do with finance. It had more to do with what happened during the time finances were the problem, as opposed to the present time when finance wasn't the problem. Mm. It was like resentment from that. But um, what I thought marriage was, I thought it was gonna be blissful. I thought we you gonna have your best friend forever. What marriage became, people don't want to hear this. Marriage is work. <laughs> like, like, like anything you want to make work in this life whether it's your career marriage is work you know when you make a commitment when you don't feel like doing it anymore it's work mm -hmm. you still gotta make it work and mm -hmm. that's the part for me I don't think a lot of people realize real quick before I move on to, to, to Charlie what was what was the best part of your marriage and what was the worst part the best part of my marriage is, yo, this is my best friend. The worst part of my marriage, this is my best friend that I feel like is killing me. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like you're in a bunker with someone, 
And the worst part of my marriage is like I'm looking at her and I'm like, you, the person who's your best friend is the one causing you the most pain at this moment. So that's that 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 to me in a nutshell. Like the best part, your home girl. I could tell, I could just tell her shorty anything. We 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 did dumb shit. I'm talking about like <laughs> I'm talking about you know now we free. Like I remember one time, one time we we decided I never smoked before. We bought a whole car, got a whole carton of cigarettes and smoked it in the bathroom. Cigarettes. Nobody could tell us what to do now. Like, yeah, man, yeah. Whatever. You know, we just, it was fun, man. We did dumb stuff. Like, we did pranks. We did, I'm talking about really dumb stuff. Like, stuff you would do with your home world. But the, the worst part, that same person is the one causing you the, the worst pain in the world. Yeah. So. I got you. All right, so what about you, Charlie? What, what was your, um, what did you think marriage was going to be? And I forgot to ask you this, so I'm going to ask you first. Mm-hmm. What did you think marriage was going to be? What made you want to make that leap with that person? And then once you got into the marriage, how was it different than what you thought it was going to be? Um, Because it it happened fast with me and uh, and my ex-wife. I'll say her name. She'll be cool. Me and Sade. Uh, (laughs) 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 That's who she was. That's why uh, her her father named her. But um, what it was, like, my template was my parents my mom my stepdad and my dad I call them my dad but um they got, ma- they got they got married fast like mm. really fast like one minute he was the guy dating my dad my mom and the next like a couple months later it's your dad i was like okay cool so right. i and and they they're still together how old were you when they i was got- 10 okay. okay so for me i thought well hell if they could do it in the fast if they could do it that quickly I could do it that I, like I could do it. I could do that. Plus, like on on your type time, uh, I knew her. I went to school with her. You know, we was really cool. We was cool uh, outside. Like even past that, you know, when I went into the air force, um, we, I reached out to her and we just reconnected. She knows every. She knew everything about me. You know, so I was like, okay, that's the homie. Like I'm marrying my homie, really. Mm-hmm. So. Th- and I, like, I knew I wanted a kid with her, like, just because I knew how she was as just as a person, just her mind, her uh, her heart, like, she's a good heart. She's really smart, good with money, very responsible. I knew, like, just she was that other, I felt like she was going to be that part that I needed to make me kind of, like, mature and focus. And so, like, you know what I mean? When we dated, we dated for like a few months. I I was like, I wanna, I, I wanna, I wanna get married. Mm-hmm. She's like, you sure? Like I was like, yeah. You staying in my dorm and everything. And um, I even I passed up an opportunity to go uh, overseas because like uh, like I remember my shop chief called me. He's like, hey, look, we're phasing the F-15s out. Um, so and you're on the list. Where you want to go? You want to go to a different base? She happened to be sleeping like right next to me in my dorm. You ain't even supposed to be having people in your dorm spend the night. She was <laughs> like, she uh, was pretty much living with me at that time. Like at that point, like she was living with me. And I look at her. I'm like, I'm thinking about looking at her. I'm like, nah, I'm gonna just ride this out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, just I knew if where I you went to school, you went to you went to actual air like Air Force or yeah, I was like in the military. Yeah, but where though? I'm because that's world was I stationed at? that's making me sound stupid because I'm you know how like army and navy is like an actual college yeah, yeah like yeah. how is it oh no it's not like that I was act like in the I was in the service and um, that was I went to basic training did everything like that like because you those are colleges and the, I I don't know how those like I don't I never understood that you know what okay, I mean? yeah I just knew the branch the branch of services right right and okay. they all do the same thing you get recruited gets you you know go to basic training. Learn your what career field you're gonna be in within the military, and go to train for that, and then you're off to your first your base. You gotcha. Know? Okay. And uh, yeah, so like I thought, okay, marry my friend, she's responsible. Oh shit. You know, we plan, we kind of half-ass plan to <laughs> to have a kid. And that nigga said half-ass plan. Yeah, we did. <laughs> we did. I'm not gonna tell the story of that. Because okay. I promise That's not fair. to do that. Even though I tried to tell my son, and she was like, "Don't do that, like, don't uh-huh. do that." So, you know, uh, 
we did that and I thought, okay, cool, like this will work. And it was I think just get like going because at that time we moved off ba- we moved off base and we did got our, I got my first apartment, got a baby on the way. I don't get paid that much because I'm, I'm like a, I'm an E3 and she don't work and she's like not really trying to work. So mm-hmm. you got to pay for everything. And you're like, oh, I don't make that much money. And you ain't got furniture. And you're trying to get, like, you got to go through other means to get furniture. They got, I didn't want to ask my parents. But they're like, nah, you need to, we'll help you out. Mm-hmm. But it was just so much, man. And then on top of that, just learning that I wasn't fully, mentally, I wasn't ready for it. Like, I just, you kind of see, like, just, I, I think this with me, I wasn't prepared and what more? What more do you think that you needed to have, like, in your tool bag, to be men- to be mentally prepared for it? I wasn't like the the. It was more like just not just marriage, but I wasn't. I couldn't have all my. I couldn't have a successful relationship because I had a lot of baggage. Mm. And where you say you the person that's your best friend is killing you, it was like. I didn't put this woman through hell and she she fought a fight that she didn't have a chance to hell with women hmm. at mm-hmm. all because it wasn't her fight to fight in the beginning. How did you but did you know that like is this you is this post therapy you or did you know this in the moment? I didn't know it in the moment. I knew it not even post therapy, during therapy. Okay. Coming coming at the end when We'll probably get to that part like in more detail but coming at the end i just it was the realization like oh she didn't have a shot in hell like, mm. she, I, I was not prepared for this at all i wasn't mature enough i wasn't i held on to things that ain't had nothing to do with her mm. and i you know what i mean like it just i think the 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 best part of the marriage really was her just in her efforts and what she would go above and beyond to do just to make it work and just she did like she like even her the, the small the, the little things like gifts for like my birthday or Christmas like I'm not really big on my birthday but like and she knew that but she'd get me a card that has something to do with like she just knew what to get me even when we was kind of on the end of it when like in my deployment like I was deployed you know me box and she said a little message like because it was a big deal for miles this is a, and I know this is a big deal for you. It's the first issue of uh, the all new uh, Captain America comic, mm. comic book when uh, Sam Wilson became Captain America. And she, the reason why she said that is because for Miles, yeah, Miles Morales is Spider Man. Mm. And, you know, Miles, black kid, got my son. He's like, he looks like me, you know what I'm saying? And for mm. that, he, she knew I was a big Captain America fan. And just a black man as Captain America, she thought, like, yo, like, this is you. This right. is what you know. So, she always knew what she always like. Kind of like knew what to what to get me and everything like that. And or just like what like she, everything was always genuine with her. And like 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 I said like the really the, the for me what I thought was the bad part was me. Hmm. Just because of what I just what she had to put up what she had to put up with and tried to fight through to just and she was trying to understand it she couldn't right what um damn like we we all right we in it already what made y'all well let me ask you Vic because he Charlie kind of already said his reasoning what made you want to go ahead and and get married like what made you want to what made you make the decision of like you know what like, I want to be with this person for the rest of my life. And let me, and while you think about that, because while you were talking, what I was, my, my next question that was actually formulating more specifically was, did y'all want to get married because of the girl? Or did y'all want to get married because you thought that you were ready? And clearly you kind of already answered that for me. So that's why I want to know what you think, Vic. 
She gonna see it, <laughs> <laughs> You, I mean, you already said yeah. she know everything about you and shit already, so. Yeah, already. I didn't think I was ready. I didn't think I was ready because uh, I mean, I, let, let's let me put it into context. I didn't think I was ready, but I knew I was married. I just didn't think that particular moment was the time to get married. Mm. Um, but I didn't think I was ready. Um, she had brought it up, and I was just like, nah. Because most of our friends were way older than us, and it was just me. I'm like, nah, we're not ready for that. Cause one, I didn't graduate college. I, and not only did I not graduate college, I don't have an inkling of what I really want to do. Like, I was jumping from major to major to major. Like, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So, um, I knew I wasn't ready. And then, she, you know, we talked about it. And she, you know, she, we expressed that. She was disappointed with it. You know, um, very She was disappointed with the fact that you wasn't, that's yeah, not something she, that she was really yeah, on at the, at the yeah. moment. She was disappointed about it because she really wanted to get married, and um, she thought we were ready because we had a, you know, we had a great. It, it's so weird. I don't know if this ever happened to you guys where you had a friend and then you became um, in a relationship with the friend. It's weird because things are easier. It's easier for it to go along quicker than mm-hmm. a traditional. Because a traditional, I see you. I try to talk to you. There's that getting to know each other part. Mm-hmm. With us, it's like, like I used to view you as a little sister. You know what I mean? Like you, like, I, like my, like I knew you, knew you. So, so by the time we got together, it made everything go you could quicker. Skip those processes. Yeah, like it, 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 it made the process a lot quicker. But my apprehension was more so. You know, men and women have different roles in, in marriages, and I didn't think I was financially ready for that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like I said, we spoke. She was disappointed. She cried about it. And probably like the next day I sat down with her. I was like, you know what? I love her. And I'm, I was like, you know what? Let's get married. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And we did it. And in hindsight, was it the right thing to do? You know? Was not? No, nah, I don't think, okay. you know, I don't think it was the right thing to do. It wasn't not, it wasn't not the right thing to do to get married. It wasn't the right time. Mm-hmm. Because, be real with you, I wasn't mature enough to handle a wife, a daughter. Like, I didn't know nothing about that. Like, I, like, mm-hmm. like I'm, I'm, you know, like. What is it, what is it that the woman or the, or the women, what is it that they said or what is it that they did that made you go against what kind of seems like was in your gut? Because, like, the way that y'all speak about it is that. You kind of knew that you wasn't ready, but you went in like you went ahead and, and went anyway. Like, was it something that is it something that the woman is, is saying to you that's putting pressure on you? Do you feel pressure just because because of yourself? You don't want to lose her, or is it pressure that she's actually applying by the things that she's doing or the things that she's saying or or the things that maybe she's like pulling back from doing because of the fact that like oh because you, you know how sometimes I don't know if it was like this years ago, but now it's like. Uh, there's a, a conscious decision that, that women make to where they don't want to do like wifely things if they're not a wife yet, which, you know, you got to res- you respect that. But I'm just wondering, like, what does that look like if that's something that that those women were doing? I think I think as a man, I know this now as a man. Get a little closer on the on I, I know this, <laughs> my I know this now as a man, as a man, like you, you, you know, what's good for the relationship and what's good for you and you should be steadfast in that and non-wavering I wasn't mature enough at that age to understand that like there are consequences to me going against my hunch or me not hunch me going against what I know is right at the moment at that time financially I was working at Starbucks mm-hmm. was it really financially there you know even though I was a supervisor I was making okay money I wasn't ready as a man now, I know, yo, you want to get married? We can't do this right now. Mm-hmm. But at that time, I wanted to please her. I loved her. I wanted to please her. So she wanted to get married, and I acquiesced to it. Right. 
now as a 38 year old Victor I'm like there's consequences to this because now if we get in a relationship and I can't provide that's a strain on the marriage that's me being mature but at that time it wasn't even an ultimatum it was no real, you know how women do it right now, like you better shit or get off the pot. Mm. It was nothing like that. It was <laughs> just me, like I love her, I want to please her. That's and and in hindsight, nah, that wasn't the right thing to do. Mm. I don't regret it because we had it. It was good up until it wasn't. Right. <laughs> you know, like right. it was good up until it wasn't. Speaking of up until it wasn't, and this is for both of y'all, like. At what, like, what was the thing that happened where you realized that this marriage might be in trouble? Yours might be shorter than mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, you know what was crazy, man? Like, I, I knew it was, I knew, okay. She had went clubbing. Now, we, you know, full disclosure, you know, I told you I grew up in church, whatever. Um, so she was not, um, you know, she was expressing herself. She was going out, blah, blah, blah. She had gone clubbing and her and I were getting into arguments a lot about that because she was coming home at wild hours of the time. Mm. And I've always thought like in my mind, like we was going to be together. We we're going to be together. There was one time she came home. And it wasn't the beginning of the end, but it was the first time I thought in my mind. And I remember writing a post. You know, I thought I was deep back in the day. <laughs> I remember writing a post on, it was Facebook. It wasn't even, Instagram wasn't even a thing at that oh, don't time. Don't worry, Facebook will remind you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said, what happened when the thing you thought was infinite become finite? Mm. That's, that is kind of deep, I, though. And, I, and, I was, and the, whole, the whole purpose of me writing that was, what happened when this thing of marriage that I thought would have been forever becomes a possibility where it's not? Yeah. And that was way before we had real issues yeah. that, that that would tell me that this might not work. But it just hit my me and it just hit me at that moment when she had came late, and I was like, "This might not work." And that was the first time I had a possibility of that happening. Like. And this was like during the good times, mm-hmm. but it hit me like because it and because before that there was never a possibility that this might not work, mm-hmm. and that was the first time I was just like, this might not work. Because <laughs> just because she went to the club, or because she was coming home late, or because it was For a me, repetitive I felt like thing, it was a lack of respect. Okay, I felt like you were disrespecting me. Okay, <laughs> like so it was like if you continue this, I might have to kind of make a decision because. You know, now, you know, like I keep saying, now I know better. What I should have done is took my ass to bed. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, like instead of waiting up and all that, I should have took my ass to bed and left it at that. Because now that I'm older, I'm like, she was, when we got married, let me put things into context. I was 25, she was 24. I got married two days after my birthday. So technically, I was just 24. Mm-hmm. And her, she was 22. She got married a month after her birthday. So a month ago, she was 21. Mm. So by the time she's doing all this thing, normal 21, 22, 23, 24 year old are going clubbing. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, right. but you know, I, I, we were sheltered. We grew up in church. We didn't know any better. So, but for me, that's, that was the beginning where I felt in my mind, like this might not work. Now, a lot of things happened afterwards, but that was like the inkling in my mind. Like, yo, this might not work. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. All right. Like, the first time and this even led to the first split was just it was money it was like it was finances um just me feeling like i was i felt like there was so much pressure on me to 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 just have like because we went we moved to our first spot we didn't have anything and she was pregnant and i was just kind of like i gotta pay for everything and get this furniture and get this and get that and I don't have no help and you can work because you're not like you like what a couple months pregnant like and you're talking about oh I'm pregnant I'm tired I'm tired and I work <laughs> like the way I'm thinking is you don't do shit right I'll be outside I'm, I'm working on planes I gotta work 12s I gotta sometimes I gotta work 12s sometimes I gotta stay later to try and uh, fix a jet and, and 
in, in the cold or the heat, whatever. Like I do, like I work harder than you. Mm. You're just you're just chilling. But like at that, you know, as you look when you're older, you're like, mm, I mean, she's kind of pregnant, though. Yeah, like it's like it's like yo, but she kind of pregnant, yeah. though. And then her dad's like, yo, man, she pregnant. And like me and her dad button heads, like we was going to war. Like I'm like, like I'm, I'm kind of saying shit to kind of try and force his hand. Cause I'm like, oh, like, I'm not going outright. Just like, like it was like, we're going to come to blows. Oh, you and now I'm going to just keep a, I'm going to keep pushing you. I'm going to keep pushing you. So, so go ahead and try me. Like, but you know, honestly, like it, the funny thing is now. That's like my nigga, yo. Oh, that's my oh, uh, Supreme. Yeah, that's my nigga. That's oh, that's my nigga. Oh, I love that nigga to death. Yo. Oh, that's, that's the homie. Like I tell, I tell the funny thing. The funny thing is about that. Just getting off subject. Every time when I had my son for the summer, we would go to Queens and to see uh, him and uh, Grandma Rosa, and like we spend the day, we leave, and when I leave, it's the same thing every year. Text her, your dad is the coldest nigga I ever met. I swear to God. You know? <laughs> but it was it was just that my whole like I'm freaking out because I'm like I'm in my own head of just thinking I don't want to fail. Like the main thing was just the pressure of I don't want to fail. Am I good enough? I'm not good enough. I don't like I don't think I'm good enough for this. And then like when it was just she would complain about this. She's like, I don't have to deal with this. The first thing I, I would, my go-to was always, yo, you can leave then. Mm. Like, just go, then, then leave. I don't care, I don't need you. Like, I can do this all by myself. And that's like, that was when I realized, like, I don't think I even want to be a husband. Mm. Like, it would just hit me, I was like, oh, I don't, I didn't even want to do this husband shit. Cause like, I didn't sacrifice, like I didn't gave up so much. Being a dad, I was, I was I was down for that shit, but like, but that had nothing. That more had to do with me. Yeah, there was a other stuff that, that behind that, and um, yeah, that was the first one. Like when I just that was the first one. Real me realizing I didn't want to be a husband. Like mm -hmm. I was like I don't want to be. I don't want to do this marriage shit. And then, but then at the same time, like the the fear of her being with somebody else, you know, I was like no because. All the cool shit I had, like <laughs> that nigga gonna have. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> so you know, and plus I was like, you know, I gotta try. Like you can't just quit. You gotta try. And then the second was uh, social media. Like it, it started off of social media. Like I would always feel like she acted like she was single mm. until like it's like she was teetering that line. Until someone would like actually like kind of like, like press her or something like that, like like I try and get with her, and then she throw out like, "Oh, I'm married." My husband would like that. Throw my name in some shit, mm -hmm. like like it was the big Joker. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> like every time, like I'm like, and, but like I would, something was always in my head, like, "Yo, just read the thre read the thread," and then like I'm like, "Yo, you you playing games? Like you acting like you single?" Mm -hmm. Like and that's your constant thing. Like you act like you're single until you need to not be single. Right. Like I, I, I was feeling disrespected, you know. And I would bring it up. She would be like, "Yo, you're insecure. You're insecure." And I was because really the main, it, the big issue was the whole fear of not being good enough mm -hmm. for anyone, you know. And so it was that feeling, and I just kept feeling like one day she's gonna leave. She's gonna leave. She's gonna leave. Uh -huh. She's gonna leave. And then I just, I just figured if, cause you you said like when I knew the, the beginning of the end. Yeah. Um, when I had that, the bright idea of saying, Hey, let's have an open marriage. Because I was like, if maybe, if you, <laughs> cause if you have that option, you won't leave, you'll stay, but you can do whatever. And then I was like, this is open for both of us. You, but were, I, you were cool with her doing nothing? I didn't think she was going to do anything. I didn't do anything. I figured if the <laughs> option was there, you'd be like me and be like, oh, I know it's there. I ain't going to do that shit. And then she was like, one day, she was like, yeah, I'm about to go out with this nigga. And I'm like, 
And like I'm trying to, like, <laughs> he I'm was at, like, yo, "Wait, what?" I'm at, yo, I'm at a <laughs> yeah. cool. cool. I'm at a crossroads, like, because in my head, my head, my, my brain starts going like, "If you say don't do it," she's like, "I won't go." He's like, "If you say," she probably did it for you to say no, though. That's what I'm thinking, but like, that's what I now knowing now, yeah, she kind of was, but at the time, I'm like. But if I say You're no, fried. she's gonna get fried. she gonna be mad and then she's just gonna cheat on me. So if I let her do it, then it's like she'll still trust me and she won't cheat on me. I'm just gonna be pissed all night and I'm not gonna sleep. Let her go do it. I'm pissed. Like I'm You pace it back and forth. I'm up. livid. And then I asked, who was it? She didn't tell me, but something told me like something told me like look at her phone. Like a dick. And I look in the phone. I find out who, she, who it was. And it was a nigga that I didn't like. That she knew I didn't like. <laughs> Bitch, have you lost your fucking mind? And I'm like, like, I'm cursing her out. And at that, when I knew, okay, this, I don't think I, I don't think I could do this. It's when I, I had the feeling of hatred. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, I, I just had that feeling. I had that feeling of hatred, inadequacy, all that stuff, and I blamed her for it. And I, I just hated her, and I was like, I don't want to do this. Like I, that was the beginning of the, that was the real beginning of the end, because I held that grudge for like ever, to the point where even I, I cut the we, I, I told her I was like, Yo, I can't do this. I can't like do this whole open marriage thing. And she was like, Okay, fine, cool. I just want to get things back to normal. Mm. And I was like, yeah, I'm about that, though. I'm not going to let go. I'm going to hold a grudge, and I'm about to go on a cheating spree. Mm. You told her that? No. The hell no. I didn't oh, tell her that. I said to myself. <laughs> I'm about to be out. Like, like, I was really like, I'm, in my head, I'm just like, yo, like, I'm really, I'm really about to just. And, and you know what? I did everything, like, and I'm going to leave, and I want you to find out. Mm. Because I want you to feel the type of hurt that I felt. And the fucked up part is she never, she didn't find out until I told her. Hmm. I, she, it was guilt like that. And me dealing with that type of guilt, let me know that I ain't built for this cheating shit. Mm. I ain't got it in me. I'm not, I ain't like, I don't know how niggas do it and, and can sleep and know that. <laughs> no, nah, for real. Like, because like for me, he I don't. and can sleep. <laughs> because I don't like losing, because I dwell on it. Like I dwell, like, I'm like, yeah. yo, you cross some of that. I crossed someone that was solid with me. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And when you, like, I can't, you can't do that. To, like, you can't do that to people. You can't do that to good people, especially. Like, regardless of anything, you can't just be out here just doing people foul like that. And it, it ate away at me. Like, that was just, but, like, I knew, like, when at that moment, especially when I was just going on and all out my mindset was like, I hate you. And I want you to feel the hurt that I felt like I was that spiteful and vengeful mm. on a person that was really just doing some shit because she's like, look, whatever will make you happy. I just want you to not feel like you can't trust me. Right. To know that I like had that in me towards her on some shit that was really my fault. And that was on my issues. Yeah, I was like, that's that's why I know. Like, I can't, I can't, I can't do this. And it took a mental breakdown during a deployment, and then me telling her the truth to realize, like, I need help. Mm. I need some fucking help, bad. Something you said way before you said all of that stuff was you was talking about the pressure that you were feeling as far as like, you know, paying for everything being responsible for everything really just kind of just like the responsibility that i guess comes with being a husband mm -hmm. um i want to stay on the pressure part like because i don't know if like the people who aren't men and women who aren't married i don't know if we fully understand like the level of pressure that actually comes with being someone's spouse you know and obviously as men we can only speak or y'all can only speak from the husband's perspective of what that pressure, number one, like what cons what does the pressure consist of? And then also like, what does the pressure really 
feel like? Like, do you always feel like you're under the gun? Do you always feel? Do you ever feel like you're that you are doing enough? Like, or did you always feel like you were kind of behind the eight ball? And if you did always feel like you was under that constant pressure, was it from was it from the from the woman? Was it from society trying to tell you what you need to be as a husband, or was it just from yourself, like looking in the mirror? Yo, can I ask you a question? Like on that, can I ask you a question? Pressure. Did you feel more pressure in being a, a husband or being a father? Like, what was more, what was? And just in case y'all didn't hear that, because the mics is having issues, oh, he fault. said, "No, I'm just I'm gonna I'm just repeat it because my mic is the one that like the needle is really buzzing." He said, "Did you feel more pressure from being a husband or from being a father?" That's a good question. That is a great question. From being a, a husband, as crazy as that sound, I'm gonna put so to put things into context. Like I told you, I was at working, and she took the brunt of the financial burden that she was working. And I don't know what it was. I, you know what would ha- happen to me when my daughter was about to be born? I kept on feeling like this would be the stimulus to make me like, I. Right, Mm. I'm going to go get a job. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go that. I'm going to be real with you. It never happened like that. Mm. The reason why I finally started to, you know, because I had a job prior to the, my marriage where I, I got paid. All right. I was a, I used to sell life insurance. And I got paid okay with that. Um, better than I got paid prior to my previous job. So once I got accustomed to that, when I lost my job, it was this mental thing of I'm not going to do, to do a job now that's less than that, that I'm getting paid less. Mm. But what I didn't realize at that moment is, is you should take anything right now. And the thing about me is once I'm really unsatisfied with something, I'm going to do what I have to to get out of that situation. And she would always tell me, go look for this, go look for that. And I wouldn't. You know when I finally got a job? When she changed. Like, when she changed, where it started to be, like, she wasn't giving me affection, she wasn't whatever, it was like, damn, she she's serious now. Mm. So, I went and took a trash job. This was, like, <laughs> this was, like, a call center job. Uh-huh. And that was the worst job I ever had. Like, like, it was terrible. I'm talking about, like. What made it terrible, though? Because I worked in several call centers. Bruh, it was some, And some of them have been actually been cool because don't nobody call it. But then the ones where niggas be calling yeah, back to back to. Oh, those it are the was worst. It bad I because it. it was one of those things, like, once you met the quota. Let's say they had a quota for the week. Yeah. And you met it by Wednesday. You're not working Thursday, Friday. Oh, okay. So, it's like people are pacing themselves now. You know, right. and it's like you can't. How do you like come think about it? I hadn't worked in a while, and now I do work, and then I have a job where it's like it's still unstable, mm-hmm. right? You know, it's like it's like, and I have to get up, go to work, and I was just like, man, I could be home with my daughter, like you know, what I mean, like I was doing that. Um, but uh, to answer your question, it was more pressure being a husband because I, you know, what it was with me being a father that what didn't feel like it was pressure, it was just like. I, my, my brother-in-law was an excellent father, so I felt like I had the example of what it was to be a good dad. Mm-hmm. So even though I had my own issues with my father, I just felt like, that's my baby. I'm a, but the fact that I, had, I, I felt like I was slacking on providing for my family, that was way more pressure than anything else because I was raising my daughter. Like, I was you know a stay-at-home dad. I was raising my daughter, so it wasn't that big of a you know i you know i honestly did feel like one day i'm gonna realize i have a daughter and one of them, and it <laughs> never came it really never came what yeah. really came was once i saw her change i'm like i gotta get out and and like she's like she always thought like i got unsatisfied with that job and got a way better job afterwards mm-hmm. her thing was just get anything and then you could transition to whatever but i didn't i didn't really you know i didn't it never happened the way I thought, you know, because you th- you know what it is, too? You listen to rap. He's like, yeah, I got it out the mud because my kid. You know what I mean? You, you, or you watch these movies. It's like once I had a kid, things changed. Right. That, that wasn't my experience. Right. 
You right. know, it really wasn't. I don't know why it wasn't. It really wasn't. The pressure was you got to provide for this family right here. You, Did you feel like you had to provide as one person? Is that the pressure? I like, felt you like felt like you had to be the like pressure the... pressure was I felt like I was not doing what I was supposed to do. Like as a man? Yeah. I, I didn't feel like... Like, I have a woman that's providing for me. Okay. And you felt like it shouldn't be that way. Nah. I understand. And, and I didn't realize that till years later um, when we things are horrible between us and we do a latch ditch effort to like, if this is going to... Before this ends, let's give a effort and we went to therapy and then during therapy you know that's when i realized the reason why i was so whatever i was depressed mm. you know what i mean when you have to wake up and ask your girl for money to do your hair hmm. <laughs> like as a man that takes away from you like 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 but i didn't know that at that time and i went through a depression or whatever the case is but it was more pre- like, to go back it was way more pressure being a husband and a provider than being a dad because I just knew right off the bat because of the relationship I had I'm going to take everything I didn't like about my experience with my dad mm. I ain't going to do that with my daughter you know what I mean like, yeah. like, so it wasn't I don't think it was that much pressure yeah. it was the providing part I got you I was going to say well you asked the question which was a great one but like what's your, how would you answer that question though um, a little mix of both but more so being a father um because the relationship I had with my biological father or lack thereof, that is that was the catalyst to why I was how I was. I wouldn't find that out until years later. I'm sitting in the therapist's office and I give her a whole rundown the first day. But what it was was just like I knew like as a husband, like I just like it, it was like I didn't like it. I didn't like being a husband, so like there was but I knew, like, oh, but you got to provide. But it's like, but I'm, I'm this rank and I get paid this much and I have, we took on, I took on so much so fast, so young. I'm like, yo, how the fuck am I going to do this? And then on top of that, it was like, but the main thing was, I don't want, I don't want Miles to turn into me. Mm-hmm. And I don't want him to be like me at all. If, just, just as long as I am there, I got to just be good. I have to be great. I have to be more. I have to just raise him in the right direction and just make sure that like my main my, my biggest concern and even to this day she'll tell you like she'll like yo you worry about something that's not even a real factor it was like I don't want him to not like me hmm. like I just don't want my kid I don't want him to not like me and when you have like a horrible horrible case of imposter syndrome your your biggest fear is one day he'll stop looking at me as that superhero and he'll, he'll realize the truth about me. Mm. And if I lose that, then what, what do I got? Right. Like, so now you put more pressure on yourself to achieve more. And you look back in your life and you realize you, you could have probably been those things your, your son sees you as way, way early on had you not just squandered time thinking, I got all the time in the world, you know, so now you're pressuring you, you you pressuring yourself to accomplish these things, and there's other thing factors in too, but now when you get to that point to, of just like putting your best foot forward in life, and just trying to be better, you want to show your son like. For me, it's like, I just want to make sure you don't look like a liar about me. I don't want you to be wrong about me, and I think maybe, like that was the, my the pressure, just like. You want to be you want to be good enough but then you want to have to, you want more time am i giving him enough time even when this shit happened with the with the with the pandemic and you can go nowhere like uh last year the last time i saw him like in person was on his birthday mm-hmm. in february i can get it, I, it normally it's i go down there every month until summertime and then he's with me right and i didn't have it and then I just kept feeling like, yo, I'm losing time, I'm losing time, I'm losing time, and he's not with me, and the less time he's with me, and then I found out about, nah, that wasn't, then it was like, year before last, you know, she's with someone now, and uh, they, they're out, they, I see the pictures and the videos, 
going horseback riding, doing this, doing that. And I'm like, I got to maximize my time. I got to do more because I don't want him to forget about me. Yeah. Like, because my main, like, that was my fear. Like, I remember when he, he, he felt like I would forget about him if I had gotten remarried and had another child. Mm-hmm. He's like, I got to live with you. And I was like, well, well, what about mom? And I would always say, well, what about mom? She'll be by herself because at the time she wasn't in North Carolina, we were both in Jersey. I was like, but I was like, you don't want mom to be by herself, right? And then she's like, well, I just, I just got to stay with you. I was like, and the, I see him getting worked up about it. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. And I'm playing in my head. And I was projecting me in, onto him of just, I was like, yo, you think you're going to be forgotten. And because that's what happened with me, with my biological father. Mm-hmm. He cheated on my mom. He had a kid. And that's the story I was told who knows he had a kid my brother my, my younger brother and he had they didn't work out he had my sister he has a relationship with him with both of them he knows them he talks to him has I was your first born mm. why the fuck you don't like me right you know what I'm saying and then for him I, he just hearing him say that like just I don't want you to forget about me I was like I, I flipped out. I freaked out. Like, I just yelled at him, like, yo, like, don't you ever say that. Like, I will never forget about you this time and third. I'm yelling at him about this, but more so, I'm not yelling at him. It's like I'm yelling at me and what I was feeling. Yeah. You know, and that's my thing. I don't want him to, 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 I, I was just like, I, I never told him those things. Like, he, he always tries to get to know me more as well. And I mean, uh, I'm like, I can't tell you that. I can't really talk. You're not going to understand until you're older. And he's like, okay, so when I'm 13, you're going to tell me, right? I was like, I'm a, if you really want to know me that bad, <laughs> like, I'll let you know, but you're not going to like Because, like, even just talking, when he wanted to know why me and his mom got divorced, and I was like, yeah, I was very, um, I used to be really, mo- I was mean to your mom because I didn't like myself. He's like, why wouldn't anybody, why wouldn't you like yourself? I was like, there, that is a dark story. I don't yeah. know if you're ready for that. He's like, go ahead, just tell me. I, I won't be mad. I was like, it's not about that. It's, I'm afraid of, and I told my therapist this. I was like, yo, I, like, him seeing me as a, this, this superhero that he sees me as, if I lose that, then what? Mm. That's how I like, like, then what? Then the jig is up. Right, right. And I, like, I know, like, when you, like, I can't lose that. But I think that's also kind of how you feel, though, that the jig is up once he finds out that you're not a superhero. Like, you know what I mean? I feel like that with anything I do, like, just in, 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 um. But what I'm saying is that's probably not, that's probably not what's going to happen. Because what happens, just, and I'm sorry to cut you off, mm -hmm. but just like what happens with all of us, right? Like, we, we all look at our like when we're children for the for the most part if you have a decent relationship with your parents like you kind of look at them like they like they superheroes like they your first role models they are the first people that you look up to you know what i'm saying you're probably gonna take after your mom with certain things or take after your dad with certain things follow them around or whatever and then you know as you grow you just start to as you grow you start to realize that you know they're people you know what I'm saying? And just like how you make mistakes and just how you had to go through dating and relationship fails and mistakes and maybe you lied or you cheated a couple of times. Like, that's just human shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I think I can look at, like, when I sit down and I talk with my mom or when I'm going to talk to my dad um, on camera, but even when I talk to him off camera, like, you just kind of realize that, like, yo, like, these niggas is really just trying to figure this shit out. Like they really, they still kind of trying to figure it out, and I and you don't hold it against them because you just recognize the fact that they're that they're also people. <laughs> um, damn, where we leave off? Oh, we well, we was pressures. Uh, oh, we we, we probably now. yeah, we probably needed a break though because that was getting kind of deep and shit. Because you was just talking about how uh, sometimes you're afraid that you that or not even afraid, but you was talking about how your son just said was trying to tell you to not forget you. Or whatever. I was just. I think what I was just saying was like, I think as we all grow older, we you know start to come to the realization that our parents are just people like the rest of us, or whatever. So I don't. I think that alone just kind of allows us to like give our parents you know more grace. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? Because, like, as we get older and we experience life, you know, we just realize, like, oh, shit, we all just kind of making this shit up as we go, trying to do the best that we can or whatever. But yeah. we were talking, like you said, we were kind of talking about the pressure parts. Um, and I don't know, like, what are some of the... Let's talk about some of the pressures of today. Like, even after y'all are divorced, but obviously y'all still men, y'all still... In the dating world, I'm out here. You said what? Well, I'm out here. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> you know, <laughs> so like, what do y'all? How do y'all? Being that you guys were married already, and then you're back single. You you back out here, right? You back out here. Like, what do you feel like? You feel like the pressures are more in the dating world because. The dating world is kind of weird now where it's like you almost have to prove that you're like, Worthy. yeah, you call, you almost have to prove that you are a husband before you even enter that realm or, or that possibility. So like, uh, what are the pressures? <laughs> All right, well, mm. y'all clearly got two different opinions on that. So like, what was you about to say? One, one thing that I see is popular now and from my last couple dating experiences is that... Um, it's this thing where I keep hearing women say, like, I'm not going to be a husband. I'm not, I'm going to, I'm not going to do wifely things. And if you saw on the Avenue Ace podcast today, I had wrote like a poll, like, what makes you want to marry someone? Is it the length of the relationship or oh, yeah, the conduct just... of the person? And it's weird because it's like I'm hearing women say, I'm not going to do wifely <laughs> things. Until we're married, but you expect husbandly things right now. Mm -hmm. Like if you're going through things, you still need me. So it's like, do you? It's like a weird thing that I feel like um, with women. It's like, do y'all understand that the guy wants something out of this too? Take sex out of it, because mm -hmm. that that sometimes people think, oh, the sex part. That's what he wants. No, take sex out of it. Y'all understand? Y'all gotta prove yourself too, right? Mm. Like, like, I, there's a, a Bible verse that says, "He who finds a wife finds a good thing." You gotta be a wife for me to want to marry, not a woman, because that's what I keep seeing. Is like they think because I'm a woman, I'm automatically wifely material. Mm. It's not always the case. So it, it, dating right now is weird because it's like, and I said this, and I've said this probably like five, six years ago when I first got in the market, whatever, whatever. It's like I feel like with both sex. It's like people want, it's like, to me, dating is like, how much can I get from this person while giving the, the lease? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Y'all scamming what, each other. Yeah. Y'all you know, like, scamming yeah. each other. That's what, that's what it feels like dating is right now. It's like, I'm going to try to like take as much from this person while giving the lease. And that's how it feels like in your, and another thing, you know, I'm 38 dating with right now. People got mad baggage that you got. I got baggage, but. You got to deal with that baggage. Mm -hmm. It's like people want to be helped. Like they want you to have grace with them while they don't have grace with you. And that <laughs> is what I was talking about when I said come healed is code. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That come healed mm -hmm. shit is code. Yeah. Like you, I'm not dealing with your bullshit, but you're going to deal with mine. <laughs> and yeah, like man. as a person that had a shit ton of baggage did the work i think that's and that's why my experience in dating is different because i had to learn how to be alone and i did that for a long time and i did that for too much of a long time to where i was like i don't really need you around or really like if you go that's fine like i'm not gonna stop mm -hmm. and like it when things go left i feel i find myself not really fighting that much Mm -hmm. Because it's just like, all right, my life still is going to keep going. And I'm still like, I still got to wake up in the morning. I still got to go to work. I still got to chase after. And were you always were you always that way? Or was it the fact that you have been married and now divorced? So now you it's almost like you've been kind of like when you've been there, done that already. So you that's don't what even I tell everyone that like, like me and my coworker Chaz get, get into an argument all the time about it. He's like, <laughs> yo, like he's like, what? Well, why are you just so anti marriage? Like, yo, where you where you are now at, I've been there. Mm -hmm. I did it. 
You just started it. I did it for, I did it for six years. I'm cool. I don't need it. Yeah. And like, and this is me with my issues. Now going, to, like, after therapy and all that shit, like, I'm just like, can I have a successful relationship? Yeah. But I know what comes with it, and I'm in a point in my life where I'm selfish. Like, mm. I, the fact that my two, my only concerns are myself and my son, like, and I don't have to put any of the things that I love doing, my passions, I don't have to put that in a back burner or always get to a point and then I got to stop because I know I haven't given dedicated this much time to someone or whatever. It's like kind of, I come in with the, like, but I'm always honest. I'm always honest about what I am, what I'm about, who I am, everything. Because, you know, I'm 35 and just even afterwards, like, I was like, yo, just be transparent with everybody. Just mm -hmm. tell them the truth and let the chips land where they may. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But it's just, I don't, like, before I would always fight. I would always, like, fight, but it was always, like, I'm I'm afraid of being by myself. That's my, that was more of my fights were really just, I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be alone. Then when, like, you get divorced and then your therapist is like, yeah, be alone. And you're like, I ain't doing that shit. I'm trying to date. And then you realize, no, you're pretty terrible at the shit. And you need to, like, really learn how to be alone. And you really need to face your feelings and feel these things that you're feeling and feel that thing of failure and all that stuff and it really puts and then keep going to you, but like even afterwards keep having your sessions it puts a lot of things in perspective mm -hmm. like for me it did and it may but it made me look at dating so differently i just kind of like i really didn't care like i just was like that's what i was like i'm like okay game's the game that's what happened like certain yeah. shit happened to me yeah that's the game Certain yeah. shit happened to them. Hey, yo, that's the game. But I told you. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I, and I, if it was like, it's like when someone said, like, life isn't fair, and then I, someone else countered it with, like, but that's what makes it fair. Because <laughs> it's unfair to everybody. For everybody, yeah. So, yeah. and, but also, it goes back. That's the game. Yeah. It just is like that. Sometimes good people get hurt, sometimes bad people get away with shit. Yeah. And, and, that's the one thing that, that, that sucks too. Like, just like when you, when you were the one that did some bad and then you had to pay for it or you're still, it feels like you're paying for it. And then someone else that does bad to someone treat someone wrong. They just having yeah. a life. But then we but, don't know. We also don't know their, we don't know their demons either though. True. Because kind of like how you, like a lot of the things that, that you're transparent about, a lot of people aren't. But they still have those. They still feel those things, like you know what I mean. Like just, but you're just courageous enough to to go to therapy or to come sit down and and talk about it transparently on a platform like this. Yeah. Where it's a lot of people who might have done those same, you know, bad things or fighting those same demons, but they just never speak about it or they never let it get out. But it's still within them, though. I think what people should like as soon as you kind of what I learned from myself was. And I'm not gonna suggest for people because they they got their own ways of dealing whatever and stay path whatever their journey is. I realize like as long as I try, like that's one thing I could say. Like even if I when I'm like I don't when it comes off like I don't care, I put forth the effort. Sometimes like yeah, there's times I'm just like look man, this is like I'm just dating and having fun. Uh, but then there's times where motherfuckers can make a really compelling argument to just make you be like. I don't know what it is about you, <laughs> but I think I'm going to let you stay here. <laughs> I want to see where this goes. Uh, <laughs> and I've had, and, and I've had that, I've had that after, you know what I mean? You know, like I've had that after my, yeah. my son, mom, and you know what I'm saying? Uh, just the, the le just like sometimes you will find that just it come out of nowhere and that person that'd be like, you know, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to. I want to see what this. I want to see where this goes. Or maybe you know what? For her, maybe I would try and see if we can take it there. Or I would consider this. Or you kind of do have that feeling of just, uh, you know, I like them being in my house. <laughs> I want them in my house more often. You know, like and 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 I want to come. Maybe like the idea of them being there when you get home or. Just something like sometimes people bring that out of you, but like, yeah. uh, but like, if it, it and if it fails, 
I learned also just don't take it personally. Really. Like, don't take it too much to heart, but feel how you feel. Like, you if it hurts, it hurts. Let it let feel that hurt. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And good, bad, and different. Just feel it and just know like, yo, that's the game. <laughs> like, but don't ever stop being who you are. Don't ever stop being honest with people. Yeah. And don't ever like. Before that, I would always just be like, "Yo, why you're a liar?" Then this, that, and third. Everybody's a liar. Now I'm just like, "Look, man, I'm gonna be solid. Like, I'm gonna be solid. I'm gonna tell you who I am. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and put forth the effort. And if you don't, I ain't gonna hate you for it. I'm gonna be disappointed. Like shit, yeah. I ain't gonna hate you. And just kind of learn, like, man, that's it, it happens. But you gotta keep going. You can't hold like, cause that holding on to shit, like being the person that used to hold on to shit, man, that shit is too much." It's too much, yeah. and then it affects your dating life. And then you bring it like you bring it baggage. You, yeah. and then you the motherfucker they talk about when they say, you know, be my piece, come here, <laughs> and a bunch of that, just the blind leading the, the <laughs> fucking idiot, and the, the, the ongoing cycle of foolishness and dating. Yeah. Did y'all um? You mentioned a couple of things. You mentioned effort, and I kind of wanted to before before we. In the discussion, I definitely didn't want to forget this part. Um, the sex part. How does sex, how does sex change when you get married, if if at all? And you laughing, so you could go ahead and go first. And I, and, I, and I say sex and effort in the same vein because I feel like from a male perspective, I don't know if it's true, but like the way that it's usually painted is that men always want to have sex and women have to kind of be like work up to like sex is almost like a chore to them. I'm not saying that that's true, but that's how it's painted though. That's how it's, I mean, that's, from the outside looking in, when from a single nigga who's never been married, looking at how people paint the picture of marriage, that's what it, it looks like. That's the roles in marriage. The men are always chasing the women around the house trying to have sex and the woman is always saying no i'm tired i don't feel like it i'm not in the mood i got the kids i got the job i got the this i got the that and it's like but the man is like steadily chasing behind them trying to trying to hump and shit so like that's how it's portrayed in you know sitcoms tv movies whatever even in the barbershop sometimes. So, like, that's why I asked. The barbers lie. I mean, not. No, they, they, they lie. The only thing I, is, you let them lie because I don't want to fuck my hair up. But, you like, nuts. But how does it really, how how does it change, though, going from, you know, you single and dating versus going to a relationship versus going into being engaged versus now being just full-fledged married? From y'all experience, obviously. I want to go back to what he said a couple of things ago and then I'm going to answer um, your question was it did change me in a sense of um, when I was in my marriage I was a very aggressive person okay I had a very bad temper well you, so, yeah, you from told, Brooklyn and you Haitian so you know, like, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, now, I think what happened is I had a bad temper this is the first time you genuinely love someone and the person you love know the right things to do to push you to the right limits. Mm. After my marriage, a lot of people say I'm stoic. <laughs> like, 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 it's so funny because I was dating someone and I asked my ex-wife, like, um, Gina, I asked Gina, yo, how would you describe me when we're married? And she said, you were very emotional. <laughs> and I described the person I was dating at the time. She was like, you're very stoic. Mm. You're very emotionally unavailable, <laughs> and that's what happened afterwards. It's okay. like I get you know how to like temper yourself. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, like yeah. you, you know how not to 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 like be out there like that. As far as sex, I think people gotta realize these are life is about ebbs and flows. If you're with someone for the rest of your life, there's gonna be times where the sex is fire. And there's gonna be a time it's a where like chore. it's a chore. Yeah. Like, oh my god, here, like, here we go. Like, <laughs> you know, like you know what I mean? Like, it like, if it, like if you know how that shit. song is forever is a, a, a mighty long time. Mm. If you really are trying to get married forever, there's gonna be times where it's I can think of times where, you know, me and my ex wife or whatever, where it was fire. And I can think of times where I'm like, bro, like 
It's been a month. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's going on too much. Like, what's going on? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, it's ebbs and flow. It really is like that sometimes where it's like the guy is on and, 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 and the woman's not. I'll tell you a phenomenon that happened, you know, after marriage is that, you know, when you're young, you always think men will always be like, we always want sex. A phenomenon that happened, you know, when I was out there is, listen, if I do a double, I'm not on that type of time, right? Don't come look at me with, with you know, with a sparkle in your eye. <laughs> like, like, I'm like, bro, I just did a 12-hour shift. This ain't, this ain't it, right? <laughs> right? If you want to do it in the morning, yes. But now, no. So, like, you know, like, things change when you get older. Mm. You know, it's like, when you're younger, you're... You always like, yo, what's up, what's up, what's up? When you get older, I'm like, yo, come on. Like, I told you about my ex-girlfriend, like, coming to our house. I'm like, yo, can we just cuddle? Like, why we got to, like, like, why everything got to lead to this? <laughs> like, you understand? So marriage can be like that. It can yeah, be like yeah. the guy constantly. This is the funny thing. Marriage in your 20s, the guy is constantly on her. Like, yo, what's up? Can I have sex? Can I have sex? 30s, she's probably going to be on it more than you are. Mm. And you're going to be like, yo, come on, man. My back killing me. Um, like, <laughs> you know, you're mm-hmm. going to be whatever. So that's, I don't know. That's my take on it. Mm. Like, for me, yeah, there was times where, but here's another thing about sex we have to really come into, uh, to think about. One of the reasons I was having issues with sex with my ex-wife was, you got to remember, I wasn't working. Mm. Sometimes it's a mental thing. She probably yeah. not even attracted to you in the same way. There's like, there's a lot of, like, if she's not having sex with you, there's a lot of reasons she might not be wanting to have sex with you on a regular basis. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's, there's a lot of reasons for that. It's not just like, I know as men, you, women too, they feel rejected or whatever the case is. I think you should probably try to get to the bottom of why it's not happening. You mm-hmm. know? And then that, that's for me. Were those conversations ever hard for y'all to have? Being that y'all was married? Because you said something way in the beginning that I, I, I was hoping that I didn't forget. It was about you saying you thought that your marriage was going to be extra special and actually last forever because of the fact that you were marrying your best friend. Mm -hmm. And I hear this lie all the time at weddings where it's like, oh, I married my best friend, but people don't. um, I never believed that because, like, I know the relationship that I have with the people that I call my best friends Mm -hmm. and, like, I feel like I'm. We've had to kind of cultivate that relationship over a a, a period of time, um, but then it's, it feels like you know some some women will want to want you to marry them within like a three to four year period, mm-hmm. and then still had the nerve to say that you married your best friend, and it's like you're not my you're not my I homie like see, that. I, I think you know my I mean? situation. I'm a, sorry to cut you off. My situation is different because you actually did know each I other. I actually though. did know her and. The fact that we're not married, I could call her out right now and crack hella. The thing that I'm not gonna say what happened. The thing that happened to me, who you think got the text? Like she saw everything that, 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 that happened. And yeah. I was, she was like, "Yo, shorty is." Tr- <laughs> but she, you know, we I've known her for way too long. So, but on other things where like you're not my best friend if i just met you three years ago right mm. we had a relationship the moment this relationship is gone you're most likely going to be gone <laughs> mm. <laughs> like, 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 right. you know so days are different yeah it's yeah like that's i felt like i felt what you said because like even with like past women i dated i come to i come to shot they were like yo this is some bullshit. She's like, yo, what'd you do? Yo, I, was like, yo, I swear to God, it wasn't me. Yo, you know it's not me now. And she's like, yeah, I know. Which is still strange. Because she knew the, she knew me before where it was me. Mm-hmm. And then when I tell her, she's like, yo, she tripping, yo. Like, she, she really bugging you. But that's and, what or, I'm saying. So, or but... she knows that the, the changes I uh, that I have are just like, she's like, yo, you gave a second chance? Uh. Like, you don't give nobody a second <laughs> chance. You know? Like once you feel like they they someone wronged you, get the fuck out. You know? right. and, but yeah, it's like that the whole it, it was funny when you talk about like being marrying your best friend. Like I I felt like in the divorce I got my best friend back. 
Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I felt like I got I got my homie back. You know what I mean? Because it wasn't that it wasn't like that when we were married. I mean, she was my friend, but like it was. I don't think you put your friends through shit like that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like just emotionally, like emotional roller coasters like that, and just no, nah, you don't put you don't put your friends through that. no shit like that. Not your best friend, right? But I think just in time and just going through what I went through, realizing that yeah, this wasn't it, and. It, we even was able to have a talk of just like, because like I told her, I was like, the man I am now was perfect for the woman you were back then, but th- the woman you were back then would never have been around forever. Mm. You, th- who you are now was inevitable, just like who I, well, not really, wh- who you became was inevitable, who I became was a choice. Mm. It was, I had to make that choice, you know? And, in that, I know that in you becoming who you were, we would have ended. But it would have probably been a lot more smoother yeah. because it would be like me just saying, you're not feeling this, are you? Mm. I can kind of tell and I think it's, you know. But the, y'all both speak as if, and you are, correct me if I'm, if I'm incorrect, but y'all kind of both speak as if like the way that you can interact with the woman as your best friend now that they're your ex, you couldn't do that within the marriage. Like, but okay, were those conversations just as easy as they are now? Because it, because you know what? I think the difficulty. I think what you're referring to, I could, but when you're at odds with each other, you can't. Okay. Because usually when there's tension, that's when everyone clams up and go into their own corner. Because you're my best friend. You understand what I'm saying? Like, you, you don't want to hurt the person. So the next best thing is to... Just don't say shit. Yeah, don't say it. Yeah. But. Yeah, so, like, I could, but it was just like, <clears throat> now we're not seeing eye to eye. So now that we're not seeing eye to eye, you detach yourself from that. Because the only way to get out of it is to detach. If you're still thinking best friend, you ain't going to detach from that person. You need to detach from that person. So you come, you get... To the point where you're at odds and you separate each from each other. Because mm-hmm. one of the things too, like it took me a while to get over my ex-wife. One of the things people never understand, they used to be like, damn, like that sex must have been amazing. Like why can't you? I'm like, you don't understand. The thing that hurt me the most is I lost a friend. Not, you know, we used to do gym, uh, gymnastics in the crib. No. I lost a friend. <laughs> now that we cool again, that's cool. But at that time when you going through it, you like, I lost a friend. My thing was, <laughs> yeah, like, like, my thing wasn't I lost. It was like, yo, I failed. I felt like that too. I'm like, like that was the big <laughs> yeah, thing. It's like, like yeah. fuck, I failed. Like her leaving was like, all right, yeah, I get it. She, she fought. She she fought to she fought to the last round. Mm-hmm. And she couldn't do it no more. <laughs> it was just like, what the fuck am I like? She got to a point. Where, what the fuck am I doing here? Like, he, mm. like how did you I know that? This. I like, could, you kind of could tell. Like, when we argued, and I was like, "Yo, why are we even doing this?" And she's like, "You're right. I don't want to do this no more." Huh? Like, you serious? And she's like, "Yeah, I don't want to do this." And then she told me like what she held in for so long. She's like, she's like, Charles, you gotta understand that. I broke up with my my ex-boyfriend. Months later, I'm with you. We're living together. We got married. I'm a mother. I was a wife and a mother, and I never got a chance to be single. Mm. Like, fuck. Like, and I'm doing the time on in my head. I was like, yeah. You sound like my ex-wife. Bro. And then, and <laughs> then just who she grew to become. Let's take all that shit out. I was like, yeah, it would have ended anyway. There was no, I don't think there was that, and that let me know. And just even when my therapist told me, like, that let me know, like, yo, y'all wasn't even really supposed to be married for real, for real. And I, I kind of, deep down, I kind of felt like, and this sounds like some weird, like, kind of superstitious shit, but like, deep down, I knew, like, I always knew she was going to be the mother of my child. I knew she was always going to be a close friend and an important part of my life, just even outside of having my kid. And she did all those things, but the wife thing was never really in the cards. But I, I felt I had to. Like, I felt like, you know, I mean, it's like, it sounds fucked up. Like, 
hey, you here, I'm here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Rocking out. <laughs> Fuck it. Uh, and, you know. You know you know what's so interesting about what you said? That's when I realized I got over my ex. Onto the... Oh, that's when I realized you got over my ex. I had that same realization. When I looked at everything I went through, and I was like, we would have never worked out. It probably because I was I'm supposed to be who I am right now and she's supposed to be who she is. We probably wouldn't have broke up at the time, but later yeah. down the line, we would have broke up. <laughs> like there's no way around it because she would have still would have wanted what she wanted, and I would have still wanted what I wanted. And it didn't. And it was it don't. It was mesh. not gonna align. And, so, and that's really when I was like, you know what? Because one thing I do that you you talk about. There's a moment when we broke up that's very pivotal. And I wish the victor now went to that and I would have known how to handle it. But the victor now would have not been the victor now if he didn't go through what he went through. Mm -hmm. And that's freeing because it makes me realize this shit was supposed to happen. Yeah. <laughs> We were just, you know, it was supposed to happen. Like, I don't do the thing where, like, you retro, you start to go through every experience. And, like, what if I, because that's what used to kill me. I don't know if this happened to you. What used to kill me is, like, what if I did this, this would have happened. If I did that, that would have happened. Oh, I said that in the whole therapy session. <laughs> yeah. and, and then I t and then one day I was like, I was like man, I should have, I was like, man, probably if I, because I was, like, we were coming to the end. And I, t and I said to her, I was like, you know, it's crazy. If I probably would have went to therapy early probably could have saved my marriage and I probably could have fixed all the shit that I was doing and I probably could have saved my marriage. She's like, you would have never worked. I was like, huh? And she's like, you come in early, you, you, you come in too early, you'd never, you wouldn't have been ready for it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you wouldn't, and my fault. Also, you couldn't save that marriage, man. It, it was, it was, <laughs> it not even, she wasn't even trying to be mean about it. It was just like, yo, what was, what were you trying to save? Yeah. It, it, what was you trying to save? Like, Okay, you delay something for the time being, but it you couldn't stop it. You know what I'm saying? Like you just, I'm, I was becoming who I was, who I needed to become, and she was becoming who she was destined to become. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's why I said like her growth was inevitable. My growth was, I had to make a choice: either be this guy forever and keep running into the same issues and it get worse and worse and worse for you emotionally because having random breakdowns is not cool you know what i mean i got two more questions for y'all um is being faithful in a marriage realistic yeah i think so as, as weird as that as as, as, as given who i am <laughs> i got a, a serial dater that looks at it as i can't cheat on you I'm not with you <laughs> because i'm i'm with everyone you know, <laughs> and you know this it's like the street, the street. <laughs> yeah. and you know this this nigga like the, the this thing is like the locks he is the streets <laughs> nigga like you know what I'm i signed i signed on the dotted line you know? Ooh, that's i funny. committed to the game that's hilarious <laughs> you know what i'm saying uh but like I think, we, but at the same time, I think that again, it really. I think it comes to the per. It it, it, it not just you, but it also like the person you're with. Because like I said, like that a uh, uh, couple segments before, some sometimes with somebody and they make a goddamn good argument. You yeah, know, yeah, they, yeah. they be like, you know what, yo, know, like you start cutting people off. Yeah. You start like like people you had in like just in case you know in the roster or the just in case or you know someone that you kind of you talk to like keep them there like That's like the worst, though. you clear out the roster and it don't work and then now you got like you got nothing <laughs> you got nothing just to make sure I don't have a roster anymore just in case anybody is looking I don't have that I don't have that philosophy look man you know all right I'm not saying any disclaimer you know. <laughs> There's no secret. I am what I am. That's hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, like when you do clear it out and then yeah. it, it go to shit, or like you start clearing them out and then it go to shit in the middle, and then you realize you done lost someone that you kind of really wish you kept. Yeah. 
But right. what up, do you feel like it's realistic I, though? Like on some like to to be faithful? Yeah, I, I definitely think faithfulness is um you could be faithful you could be faithful in the marriage. Um I went through check out Have a New Age podcast. Um we talked about cheating. <laughs> uh, both of us talked about our experience with that. But um yeah, it's definitely the victor I am now, like, it's definitely possible. Like mm. I don't think it's impossible. I'm a Christian, so you pray about it. I'm still human. You know, mm-hmm. things might happen or whatever the case is. But for the most part, yeah, I think it's possible. Like, I think I'm much more mature than I was prior to. Um, yeah, I think faithfulness is possible. Do you think, though, do you think, like, and I'm going to put you on, you don't got to answer this. I don't know if you have already. But so you said that y'all did. Y'all cheated or just you cheated? Um Plead the fifth on this question. Okay, right here. so you cheated. So, but I never said that. I never said that. I never. But I my question is, is confirm so, or deny. Yeah. But this is my. But this is my question. All right. So okay. So allegedly, or hypothetically, however you want to preface it. I never confirm. What he said. <laughs> never. Do you? You saying? You're saying that at this this Vic right now right here is saying that. uh you can you can have a successful marriage and be faithful mm-hmm. but are you saying that as a person who allegedly cheated in their marriage before you or lawyer? no like, just, no no but this, right, this is what i'm this is that question because i openly said i cheated okay but this okay so but this is what um, I, but what i'm saying is like if you have been if you have been faithful throughout is that something that you feel you still feel like you would be the same? You still have the same attitude with because it is a little bit different for someone who's never cheated mm-hmm. to they don't know what the temptation of possibly cheating on their wife even looks like or feels like. You know what I mean? It's but not that they don't know, they never act on it. Okay, okay, that they know the temptation, they just never acted on it. Right, that is true. But for a person who has actually acted on the temptation, know how that feels, know maybe what guilt that can allow you to carry or force you to carry, and then grow from that experience, you have a a whole different, like, outlook on, like, I know for a fact that that's not someone that I want to be again because I've already been that person. You you kind of get what I'm saying because I, like yeah, if what I, you're saying is true, and I hypothetically <laughs> stepped out of my marriage, I'm not confirming nothing of that nature. I will say, um, yes, like like now that you yes, like you know what it is to have gone through that. When you get to another relationship, yeah, you know. The intricacies of that you know how hurtful it is you know how like you're risking a lot bro mm. i remember that conversation. <laughs> you know I, mean? I still you... remember the conversation to this day and i don't like and the fact that like i can remember it verbatim and this happened years ago this happened 2015 when i was in kuwait mm. that whole conversation damn if Shade watches this she's gonna probably be like yeah i remember that fucking conversation like it was it was it was really bad and i i kind of like knowing just i remember how she felt i remember like the pitches in her voice i remember <laughs> i remember the tremble in her voice i remember even in the you fuck admitted it. that yeah i it was killing me i couldn't do it that, but that's when i knew like that was that was when i knew like yo i'm not built for this cheating shit my 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 my, my son's godfather who like he was with he was with me in Korea, and me and him are real cool. He like I, when I first saw him, he's like, "Why would you do that shit? You know you can't." Like, you know, I was like, "Man, I don't care." Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, you do. You may not care now, but I know you. I know you well enough. It's you're gonna, it's gonna fuck with you. And lo and behold, it did. I, I just I couldn't. It was just and just like how it, and what made it worse was just her seeing her efforts of just trying to make things better like trying to make things the household better from when i get back everything she did and it's like 
I'm in on the, at the at the same time. That's when all like let's say eighteen years of things that I kept bottled in couldn't be kept bottled in no more. Mm-hmm. It's just a cultivation of things. But I like I said, I remember the conversation. I remember her the the, the, the her voice, the, the inflection, everything. And I what the worst part was, she was like, "We can get through this." And I was like, "Nah, you should leave." Just go. Let me ask you the question. Did you do it for her to leave? Yes and no. I, 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 couldn't, keep the, I couldn't keep the lie, but it was just like, because one thing for me is just like, I don't feel sir, I deserve certain things. So for her to still be like, I was like, I hurt you. You should go. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't be here. Because I did this to you. Mm. Do the smart thing and go. And she was like, you can't make that decision for me. And I was like, like, hell I can. And then you probably kept on doing it. To, 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 like, no, to you like. And I, I looked at it as and kind of even to this day, I kind of like throw a little throw it in her face a little bit. I was like, yeah, I sounded crazy back then when I told you to leave. And then when you finally left, I, now I'm a fucking genius. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, but it's like I knew like go like yeah. if and even if like when even in my dating like I, I when um when uh the amazon came back around and i disappeared on the chick i was talking to mm-hmm. when that fell apart and i had to like face her the i did the same she was like well i'm willing to try and do this thing and, but it, but at the same time i was like i knew it wasn't gonna i really didn't want to do it anyway because it's long distance but I was like, why are you staying? Like, I did this. <laughs> some, guys, some guys don't cheat because they just can't look you in the eye and say, I don't want this anymore. Yeah. Some guys will cheat so they can force your hand. Not guys, human beings. Mm. Women do it too. I didn't, my, my cheating wasn't to force her hand. My cheating was because I was mad at what she did. Remember, like I told yeah. her that the whole open... Oh, the open marriage. Yeah, like I was yeah. mad. So I was like, well, I'm going to just do this so you feel what I felt. Mm. Like it wasn't because I like it was yeah. like, but it, ironically, yeah, she, she was hurt, but I was more hurt than she was because I was like, why are you hurting people? Yeah. Mm. So that's like I'm not built for that. It's like why are you hurting people? That's the worst. Though. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, um, the worst is when you look at it and you just like, what are you doing? If I did it, um, <laughs> what are you? Doing? <laughs> hey, nigga, you sound like OJ, nigga. <laughs> Well, I mean, if I killed them, yeah, yeah, yeah. then I would have yeah, I mean, did it like this. Like, that's the worst. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you just, you, you can't really live. Like, some people can. Like That's but, a special cycle. Bro. Yeah, like, it, but me, like, I was just like, yeah, I ain't got, I ain't, like, it's like when, um, like, in The Wire, when, when Cuddy left Avon, the, the news was like, yo, man, I ain't got it in me. <laughs> like, I just ain't got it in me, yo, like. I ain't got cheating in me. Mm. I can like when I'm dating, I'm dating. I ain't when I'm when it's uh, I'm not exclusive with anybody. And I let it. Uh, I'm, I'll let you know. Like yeah, I'm dating other people. Yeah. But at the same, but and if and if I start feeling that one, you know, little by little, I'm cutting people off. Everybody gotta go. But if it's not like I don't keep a backup, really. And right. it, also, that's kind of like. I'm not gonna lie. That's kind of goes into my arrogance of like if I can get five, if I can get five, then I can get five again. <laughs> right. That, that's where I'm at in dating too. I don't keep a roster, and it, it might be crazy. I don't keep a not anymore. I definitely used to keep rosters, but I don't do it anymore. Kind of like when I realize when you online dating and all that thing, the concept of market is that I pick something up. And think I could get a better deal behind it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so if you have a lot of options, when that person, rather than dealing with whatever you're dealing with, with that person, you're like, you tripping, man. Monica over there. <laughs> like, 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 like before, you know what I mean? So that's kind of why I like, I, and I kind of have that mindset too. Like, when the, you know, whatever happened when I told you, because in my mind, I'm like, yo, my friend, there's a Haitian expression called, 
she pushed her on, and it means you're like a suave dude. Mm. And when that situation I told you happened, I was like, yo, what am I? Why would I put up with you? You think because you're pretty, I gotta put up? I'm capable of getting another you. Like, yeah. You understand what I'm I saying? Get, like, yeah, like I get that, my arrogant and back. Yeah. And you know, all it really comes down to is not that I think I'm all of that. I'm a man. We pursue. Mm. We're used to rejection. Right. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So if I was capable of getting you, yeah, my feelings might get hurt along the way because I gotta keep going through rejection after rejection but i know i can get another you right <laughs> you understand what i'm saying so i'm funny that's where that come from okay <laughs> fucking hilarious i have a fly ass haircut hilarious too. <laughs> like, you know, and i'm please. charming as shit <laughs> ah, yeah, okay. not for nothing i'm a fucking phenomenal kisser yeah this so thing is i'm nuts. good like me, bro. Like, <laughs> i'm a bi this thing is no nuts. matter what happens <laughs> i'm fine I'll hurt. Sure. You were special. Yeah. <laughs> but you are expendable. Like everyone else. It's yeah. an even playing field. Yeah. And just like you could have gotten rid of me and get 10 of me, I can get 10 of you. So mm. I'm, I'm not too, I, I don't get, I won't get all caught up in the whole, you know, whatever. But at the same time, like, I, but like, I, it's why I don't. Not a cheater, you know what I'm saying? If it don't yeah. work out, don't work out. Yeah. But if it do work out, cool. I'm not. I don't got annual lineups because my focus is on you. Right. And I want that. That's. It's f- just like not just because fairness is because like clearly I really fuck with you. Yeah. Yeah. I got a, I got rid of everyone. I cleared everything out. So you had did something f- for me to make me clear everything out. And you know what I'm saying? So like. And if you're worth that, I'm going to keep making, let, reminding you in my actions that you're worth it. And I'm not going to fuck it up by mm. having some other distraction or being tempted to. And if it don't work out, oh well. Right. I'll just re-up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? my, my last question for y'all is, would you get married again? I don't think I got it in me anymore, yo. Hmm. And you know part of that story. Mm. You know the other two. Mm-hmm. I don't think I got it in me anymore. And especially, especially the one who was supposed to be Miles' stepmom. <laughs> but I'm thankful for her. But it just, I saw that going, even with my, in my head, like I kind of envisioned it, like how I wanted it all to go. But looking at it I wasn't ready for her and by the time I got ready God I hope if, if she sees it she'll know I'm talking about her well, she'll probably know I'm talking about her yeah she ended up in fucking California so that sucks but you know but but at the same time that loss got me where I'm at and, but I, I I saw it going so differently if I was if I just took in all the things that she had who showed me and took it to heart then mm. trying and putting forth the effort because women don't like niggas that don't have ambition or find a complaint like you have the potential and you want to do something but you have an excuse as to why you won't do it mm-hmm. no woman's gonna deal with that after a while like they're like yo man I, I didn't believe in you you gotta believe in you and yeah. then I didn't catch it until she had left I kind of forced her hand, you know what I'm saying? And But then just seeing, like, how, where I'm at now or where I'm going, where I feel I'm going, I'm just like, damn, yo, she was right. But damn, yo, she gone. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> mm-hmm. And then just because, like, it's it's silly, but I figured if I had gotten the career that I wanted in kickboxing, I was going to propose to her when I, you know, became a champion. Like that's how I saw. I saw it that she was there. Like how I envisioned it, it was like she was there, my son was there, her kid was there. And I just do it there, like mm-hmm. you know what I mean. And and that's what I wanted. And but it didn't happen, right? So then you go to the next, you know, and you got the Amazon, and that where it, where it went. And as now I look at it, it's like I kind of created that because the fir- our first dealing was when I was dealing with my divorce. So I couldn't really fully give her me. Yeah. And I created everything that happened in regards to that. 
and then just like but those were the three those but her you know them two and my son's mom those were the three most important so it but like it's like i have that you know i tried i tried with i tried with sade and then i wanted to but i didn't really it didn't pan out and then even with people that like you would think like because uh, i've dated like in my date and i've cleared out just to maybe give the you know the idea of it the idea of marriage or like Given the the like being open to it, and then it just always I always fell in my fl- my face, but I never was felt like I wasn't like fuck marriage, fuck love. It was just like, <laughs> yo, maybe this just ain't for you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like maybe you tried it, it ain't for you, kid. Yeah, move on. Like 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 when I tried baseball when I was young, <laughs> I was horrible at it. <laughs> Not for you, kid. Move on. You yeah. Know what I mean? So yeah. I don't think I just like you know. It's okay, though. I feel it. I feel it. How about you, Vic? Um, Yeah, absolutely. If you had asked me, like, two years after the marriage, I'm like, God has to descend an angel on earth and point it at it and say, that's yours. (laughs) (laughs) But but now, yeah, absolutely. I feel like marriage gave me purpose, man. Like, Mm. like marriage gave me purpose. Yeah, I, I definitely would do it again. You know what I mean? And I, I, the way I look at it, too, is like, man, it didn't work out. It was it supposed to work out? Be smarter. Know mm-hmm. yourself better. Stick to your guns. Pray, because I'm a Christian. <laughs> yeah. Better yeah, look next I would time do it again. Yeah. I got and, you. But that's dope, though. You know? like it, As long as you don't... Because I always look at, like, I could have been like, yo, fuck this all. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I could have been like that. But I don't have that in me, but I just know what. I'm, it's like, you know what you get at, you know what you're not. You know? Yeah. But you know that you know that you're better now. To have, and you're in a place where you could do it again. Mm-hmm. And I'm in a place where, like, on paper, just with the work I put in with myself, could I do it again? Yeah. Um, you don't really want to though. Yeah. You like, just don't want to. Yeah. I tried and I kept trying. I kept falling on my face, even being a better version of me. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's just not for me, and that's fine. Yeah. You know, yeah. Maybe it's just not. It wasn't in the cards for me. Maybe there's something else. Just, just from it's like something else in my life I can focus on now. I th- you see, it's funny when you say that. The challenge for me um, is not so because you've had where you felt like you would marry someone. The challenge for me is to be with someone long enough to want to marry her. Because, mm. you know, Nick, you know. Because you a serial, you, know, you got, you just, I, this nigga stay with a date, yeah, nigga. Like, you know, Nick, you know, you know, I'm, I, like, I, you know, I be dating out here. But the reason I be dating out here is like, listen, man, like, you ain't going to find nobody if you don't date. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? It's a painful experience. But, like, I have homegirls that's like, I ain't gonna date anymore. I was like, so you think the UPS guy gonna come and God gonna say that shit? No. Like, like, you still you know gotta put your foot in. You gotta manifest it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you my Manifest it. Exactly. And wish on a star. Oh, my a God. Nigga will pop up. Yeah. Cause that's how fucking manifesting works. That's what I'm saying. I think there's in nothing in life you want. Fairy tale land. There's nothing in life you want that you don't Idiocy. have to work for. <laughs> yeah. Nothing. <laughs> like there's nothing. Exactly. I think the most important thing though for me, make sure I know who I am. Make sure like I, I I harness like you said, working on yourself enough so that you're solid, so that when you get in a relationship, it's beneficial for both of y'all. Y'all can move forward. But I don't make no qualms that I'm on dates. I don't make no qualms <laughs> that I make that effort because <laughs> ain't nobody gonna come to my living room. Nobody's going to drop in my living room. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just got to be a better judge of character out here sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, don't be, I got to, you know, one of the, and I told you this, one of the biggest lessons that I'm learning too, my time and attention is everything to me. I'm not just going to allocate it to everyone who wants it. Mm. Yeah. And that's the biggest lesson that I, I, I'm learning. My time and attention means the world. So if I'm taking my time to talk to you and I'm taking my, atten- uh, my I'm giving you the attention you want, that means the world for me. And the one thing that I'm starting to learn, you don't hand it to everybody and anyone who wants it. Doesn't mm. work like that. 
just like you have what's important to you, I have what's important to me. And I'm not just cause like, oh, you don't give me enough time. I'm trying to be who I'm supposed to be. Right. Because one of the biggest lessons I've learned, sorry I have to say this, a woman would take you off your path and then years later ask, why are you not who you're supposed to be? Mm. They will occupy your time mm -hmm. and turn around and say, well, why didn't you? No. And I had the you, opposite. <laughs> like, 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 she me. was like, yo, you might want to go <laughs> do this. Did you train? Did you run? Did you do this? Did you spar? Are you looking into this? I'm but like, that's oh, a supportive that's person, though. I'll give you that. But like, but like, that's I guess that's like a, a testament to many. I'm starting to realize one thing in my life now is just like, you know, how people always like to talk about like how they have haters and all this. I don't have that. Well, I have one, and it's me. <laughs> he said, I got one. No, like it's me. <laughs> like when you realize, I realized I was my own hater. Like just finding every reason to not do it, where everybody, like that too. everybody's like. But you can though. But you yeah. work this hard, you know. But like, look at the hours you put in in this. Look at what you're doing with this. Look at what you're doing with that. And you're like, yeah, but I don't know if I'm good. Like, it's always the, I don't I'm, know I'm, I'm like that. Enough. I think my biggest challenge yeah. in life is to get out of my own way. Like I, I, I've been, I've been fortunate. Like I mean, yes, there have been some women that have taken me off my path. But I don't even think that they've taken me off my path more so I've allowed to be taken off my path because yeah. I got too cons. That was another thing. Like you get too much. That's what mm -hmm. having a roster. You get too much when it comes. You get more and more and more. You're like another one. I need another one. I need another one. On and then DJ Khaled, you, 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 you you focus on the <laughs> like you having one. sex. You having more <laughs> sex, and you just like. You start putting your, your your passion on the back burner to go fuck, yeah. <laughs> and that's how I see myself doing. And you kind of, I think it, like, yeah, like maybe like women can take you off your path, but it's kind of like if you let them. Yeah, well, one thing I will shoot. I'm not gonna shoot people, Bill. But one thing I will say: the last person I was with, although it didn't work out. She helped me get on my path. I'll give her that. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, you know, I keep telling you I had like 11 goals last year and I hit 10. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm still fat, so I didn't hit the 11th one. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? But she definitely helped me understand how it is to be successful. So, you know. Yeah, like, I, I, I appreciate, you know, appreciate the Ghanaian for what she did for me, man. Like, because yeah. I would, I'm, I'm, I'm modeling in events and I'm actually trying this acting shit and I'm training for real for real and like I it's like like I tell like every time like when I have like most times when I do like an event I always hit her up and I tell her yo thanks I'm telling you that I always that. be like yo thank you she's like for what I'm like yo like you got me here she's like nigga you got you here yeah I'm like mm, nah you did though <laughs> like that, that, that's the best thing right there though man like you put like Seeing how you moved and how you did this and how you went after what you was going after trying to have, start your business and you you put forth that you had so many roadblocks, mm -hmm. so many fucking roadblocks, and nothing stopped you. I my roadblock was a roadblock I made. Like that was man made roadblocks. You had no, you didn't make no roadblocks, and right. you still overcame that shit. And I, I was a pussy, and I couldn't, and I just found excuses. And then I had to lose. Right. And then it was like, when you're at your worst, when you had heartbreak is like the best motivation. Yeah. Because you just feel like, well, how, what's, the, what's the worst that can happen now? I've lost everything. Did you, though? Mm -hmm. And then when you realize, or then like you have the, that eye-opener moment, like that, damn, yo, like that's what, let me try this. Like when you're like now not fueled by heartbreak of just like what I got to lose, it's like, no, nah, yo, fuck it. Like, let me try. Mm -hmm. and you try and then even if it's not the main goal but you hit little markers yeah yeah that's just the like, most important thing like, yeah and i just i'm just thankful and i I always be like i credit it i credit her for it yeah you know what i'm saying i now, feel it you know so i don't think they take you not everybody takes not you off everybody, your, like, 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 not, and not to detract what you were saying but like no not, not everybody, everybody take you off your path it's kind of up to you some sometimes you get people that some people, people help you. Yeah, help you. Even even old girl helped me. Like mm. even Amazon helped me. Just like hurt, but 
I was hurt, but I was, she, we helped each other. I could say we were very beneficial to each other. And she taught me a lot of things. Mm. She taught me a lot. And I'm thankful for it. Regardless of what, how it played out, I'm, I'm thankful. Because I became a better, I kind of became, she improved, she helped me improve my, just putting forth effort with someone you really like. Because mm. I always just like, half-ass it. I, you know, I could get her back if I want to. You know, I could do this if I want to. But, like, then when, like, when women want to see effort in dating, but then the, the other end when I yelled about, when I yelled at you, talk about, like, women don't like being courted. <laughs> 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 no, nah, because I had this thing like was, I kept seeing how women wanted to be taken out on dates, and then in my experience, I try to take someone out on a date. They just I don't know, like the disc there's like the Wi-Fi is fucked up. Or the, there's a five G a five G tower all fucked up, but just start short circuiting and don't, they start lagging in responses. Oh my god! I don't know what's going on. That's but no, nah, but like it, but no, putting forth the effort and just someone you're really interested in, like I like. A lot of the stuff, like in just in my path, and just like in just becoming a, where I want to be as a, a like career wise, or just as a person, or just why, and even if it's like I'm not seriously like I'm not trying to look for a long term, but I'm gonna put forth an effort so that we have a moment, we have we build good memories, and that you know that regardless, someone cared and someone did think you were worth the effort. So I put the effort, just maybe so you feel like you were worth it. Like, you know that you were worth it. And I feel like I'm giving you an illusion of it, but you know that yeah, you were worth this. Like, I wanted to take you out. You were the first, you weren't the option. You were the first choice. You were my only choice. Right. That I wanted to share these things with you. I wanted to put forth effort to let you know you're worth all every minute of it. Now, if I end up not being, you know, happily ever after, you know, and it is what it is, but just know you, someone felt, regardless, no matter what, down the line, you say like, you damn sure made me feel special. <laughs> right, right. And to me, that's that's the thing about dating too. It's like sometimes it don't work out, but sometimes it works out. And what, what I, I'm gonna give you an example. Last person I dated, like I said, she helped me conceptualize on how to accomplish my goals. Another thing she did, she had a great relationship with her father, and it rubbed off on me because me and my father have a very contentious relationship. Mm. Very, we had it's riddled with issues. To give you a background, I started going to therapy because I thought of uh, me and Gina's breakup was the an issue. Come to find out, eighty percent, seventy percent of the reason I'm in therapy is my relationship with my father. Ninety for me. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And one of the things that she helped me do was she helped me take my father off a pedestal. Like you said earlier, mm -hmm. your parents are human beings mm -hmm. and that's trying to figure it out. Once I took my dad off a pedestal, we have a good relationship. Like, coming here, we had like an hour conversation. That's cool. <laughs> the, the extent of my father's conversations I now used to be about 10 minutes. How's mm -hmm. the weather? How's Florida? Now we having long conversations. I'm telling him about, you know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm trying to become a cyber, an IT professional. Mm. Cybersecurity. I'm telling him what cybersecurity is and all that's this other stuff. Shit, and man. we have a real conversation. And that's something I never really had. Because yeah. I viewed my father as an en not enemy, but I always used to view my father as the guy that's always on my neck. I never wanted to have a relationship. It was always like, I have to maintain something with you because you're my father. And now I get to experience you now. And that's why I'm like, sometimes when you're dating, it may be a loss. The relationship may not work, but you might gain something from it. Like, I dated another person. She started, she never told me to go to church, but I started going to church. Now I have a relation, a better relationship with God. Sometimes it's not in the cards to work as a relationship, mm -hmm. but, but you works. gain other things from that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's yeah. one of the things I got from it. This was dope, man. Y'all, y'all really gave a lot, uh, a lot more than I actually anticipated. To be honest with you, like this, oh, this kind of felt like a, man. like I know <laughs> when I when I go back and edit this joint, like I didn't really talk that much on here. Oh, 
And that's no, but I like that though. I like that because y'all shared a lot. Y'all super transparent. Y'all kind of like made my job as like the host like real, real simple. You know what I'm saying? I asked a couple of questions and y'all just like really took it away. So um, I appreciate y'all for sharing so much, for being transparent, for being so open, uh, for being vulnerable, for not only knowing that the safest space, but actually being safe in the space to share because other people are going to watch this. Hopefully other men are going to watch this. Um, and that's really what I'm trying to do is just really like set an example for more conversations like this to be more normal. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I don't know if that's a, I don't know if that's a thing yet. I think it might be becoming a thing where men feel comfortable talking to other men about how they feel and their emotions and how they felt hurt at a certain point in time, how they felt like they failed at certain points and then how they actually work themselves through that. You know what I'm saying to become better people, like on the on the other end of it. Um, so I just want to say, you know, say thank you again, man, to both of you guys for for coming on. Hey, thank you for having me. And uh, thank you for having us. Man. Of course, man. Of thank course, man. Me, man. So before we get out of here, man, y'all tell the people again where they can find y'all, y'all social media, y'all podcast. If you know, if you want to admit that you actually did, you know, cheat in the marriage or something like that. I mean, that's. No. <laughs> That's a legend. I never said anything. I never confirmed anything. This guy's a lawyer, bro. Like, 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 like. He asked a question. Yo, you know what he, it was funny? You try to ask me the same question three different ways. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, He's like, good. Like, like, He's good. That's He's a legend. Good. Y'all funny. Y'all funny. But nah, man. Tell the nah. people they can find you, bro. Uh, you can find me at VJP24 underscore um, on Instagram. You can find me at MindOfVJP. Um, and you could also find me at another podcast I have with um, my, Gina, my ex-wife. Um, it's called Avenue Age Podcast. Okay. All right. Um, follow me on Instagram, Boss Carlo, B-O-S-5, C-A-R-L-O. Um, look at that model. And I talk shit on my Insta story, make fun <laughs> of things. I think I'm funny. I don't have a podcast with my ex-wife because <laughs> she ain't a podcaster. <laughs> and... Why would I have a podcast with my ex-wife? <laughs> I mean, that's the homie, but no. Yeah, yeah that's I all I got. It. All right, man. And, of course, uh, Jackson1616, J-A-X-O-N-1616. Uh, the Instagram for the one mic stand is one underscore mic underscore stand underscore. And, obviously, if you're watching this, you're already on the Patreon. But I want you to tell all your friends and all your homies and all your hoes and all your niggas and all them niggas who need to see these conversations and hear these conversations for the for the love of God, man. If y'all going to ask me to talk to niggas about shit that niggas need to talk to other niggas about, send them to the niggas who, who really need to fucking hear the shit, please. Because that's another thing, about, and I'm going to try not to rant, but that's another thing about having conversations like, like these. Usually, if you get people in a space who are comfortable comfortable enough to be vulnerable, we're not really the ones who need to see or hear this dialogue. Because we kind of, not saying that we're perfect, but we're already just, we're already here. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I know my aim is to try to motivate other people to have these own conversations within their own home, within their own living rooms and stuff like that, man. So, definitely... Continue to stay signed in or subscribe to the Patreon and send it to some other people who you will know will uh, enjoy these types of conversations. And uh, I'll see y'all niggas on the other side. We out.